let's go. Um, so uh, it's a great pleasure um, to introduce Damiano uh, Matza. Fantastic to have you here. And he's going to talk about programming languages for automatic differentiation. What now? Yes. Yeah, okay. So uh, thank you for you know giving me this uh, opportunity to uh, give this talk at uh, Lafi. It's actually my my first uh, the first time I attend uh, this workshop, so I'm very very happy. Uh, uh, so let me just uh, get going right away. So um, uh, I'm going to start. So as as uh, as you've understood probably from the title and the abstract, this is uh, a completely non technical talk. So I'm going to say very 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 a few things uh, uh, at the technical level. Um, but I'm just gonna uh, more or less give an overview okay, of what's been done in uh, uh, in uh, automatic differentiation uh, within the you know the community of uh, programming languages in the past uh, few years. And I mean, for, of course, from a personal perspective, a perspective that I share uh, at least partially, okay, with my uh, with my co-author uh, Michele Pagani, with whom you know everything uh, that I'm gonna talk about today is done. I mean, every, every you know contribution of mine is is of his in the sense when we've We've done this uh, uh, jointly, and uh, um, so yeah. So I'm gonna just gonna give you a little uh, uh, introduction to what has been done, and then I'm gonna try and and say you know what I think you know should be the next uh, the next steps, you know the next uh, the, the directions you know for uh, for the immediate future. So I start with uh, you know this uh, personal <laughs> bibliography. So uh, this is uh, uh, more or less the the papers that. Uh, uh, maybe I've not read entirely, but uh, that I can say something about. I'm not going to say something about each one of them, otherwise the whole talk is going to be gone just by uh, talking about this. But um, so, you know, uh, if you don't know much about automated differentiation, well, I mean, you know, you have to know that uh, it started very uh, long ago, okay? I mean, uh, it's basically from the 60s, okay? And uh, uh, so, you know, the idea is that you have a, a function, you know, from uh, a power of the real numbers to the real numbers. Okay, let's imagine that you just have that. Okay, and and this function is defined by a program. Okay, specified by a program, and you want to compute the gradient of this function. Okay, and you know there's an efficient way of doing this that was discovered in the 60s, and it's called, uh, I mean, colloquially, backpropagation. Okay, the reverse mode automatic differentiation. Um, and basically, people have been uh, have known since the 70s. Okay, how to do you know how to transform. Uh, programs. So, I mean, the, the way this works is that you take your program, okay, that specifies this function, and you turn it into another program, okay, that's basically the the, the same size, or so let's say, you know, twice the size, okay, of the original program, and you know, it has exactly the same structure, basically repeated twice, more or less. So, when you execute it, okay, you have the same uh, complexity. You know, if your original program had a certain complexity, okay, this transform program has exactly the same complexity, and what happens magically is that at the end of the execution, you get the gradient, okay, you get the, you know, when you execute the transform program uh, on, on, you know, on an input, okay, you get the gradient at that input. Um, module some, you know, trivial transformations. Um, and uh, so this, this was known already in the 70s, okay. Uh, then, of course, uh, you know, I don't know, five, six years ago, uh, differentiable, what is known today as differentiable programming came around. I mean, the, the idea that uh, we want to, uh, you know, compute the gradient of, of a function specified by an arbitrarily complex program, okay, that uses, you know, arbitrarily sophisticated programming primitives, not just these. So, yeah, I forgot to say, but, you know, these people in the 70s, they, they were just dealing with uh, so-called straight line programs, okay, extremely simple programs that are just sequences of assignments, okay. And neural networks are particular kinds of straight line programs. Okay, so for doing machine learning, for doing deep learning, this is enough. Okay, but then you know, uh, in the you know, in recently, you know, people even I mean, people in doing deep learning, you know, they have started using more complex neural network ar architectures. You know, which are kind of dynamic. You know, the neural network is 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 not you know specified once and for all, but it's like it may, might depend on the parameters itself. So you know, it's uh, so they're actual programs. You know, they're real programs, and we want to uh, you know still be able to compute the gradient. So there are these uh, uh, well-known uh, differentiable uh, programming frameworks, um, and you know and that's so you know after the introduction of these, you know that's when the subject kind of exploded in for programming languages. You know a, a lot of people started being interested in it, uh, and but in, in the meantime, in between, you know the, 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 this you know this ancient history, I mean, in some sense, and uh, and you know in modern days, there's been this paper which is kind of a game changer, you know, for for the. Uh, even though it predated, you know, the all, all the you know this this work that we're going to talk about today, but it's a game changer for, for you know for the perspective of, of programming languages on automatic differentiation because it's a uh, it's this paper in which uh, Perlmutter and, and Siskind um, realized, okay, that uh, in fact this transformation, this backpropagation transformation, actually uses higher order 
even if you only care for uh, these uh, straight line programs, okay, these first order programs. Okay, so backprop is inherently higher order. Okay, that's very very uh, uh, important. Okay, so we can do actual. Uh, you know, we, we can start doing actual differentiable program. I mean, I, for me, the difference between AD and differentiable programming is that, uh, you know, AD is just on straight line programs and differential programming is, is just on arbitrary programs. Okay. Um, anyway, uh, so, you know, then, uh, yeah, then I guess the, the, I'm just going to talk about the, the, the two papers. So when we started working on this, me and Miguel and, and my, uh, my former student, no, sorry, where are we? Uh, Brunel. Uh, yeah, here he is. So uh, Alois Brunel. Okay, when we started, so the three of us we started working together on this. It was yeah, I think around 2018 probably. Uh, so we only had a couple of papers. Okay, basically this one by Elliot and and uh, a preprint a preprint of this one of this uh, Wong uh, et al. A paper and of course for mothers and, and Siskin. And it took us really a long time to understand <laughs> what was going on. So now today it's very it's very nice that there is this, you know, this huge number of papers. I mean, I, the ones I listed here are really not it's not exhaustive. Okay, there's, there's probably many more. Uh, basically, each one of these papers start with a, an extended introduction on you know the author's understanding of what automatic differentiation is. Okay, and everybody just you know has to say it all over again from the beginning you know, because it is only in explaining it that you understand it yourself, right? So you know, so all these 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 people have understood it and that they, they they explain it. You know, so maybe there's a chance now that uh, you know that almost everybody is able to understand it just by you know taking one of the six or seven papers. I mean, there's got to be one you know that explains it in a way that you're going to understand. It, okay, so this is good. Okay, it's very very good that all these papers you know have, have, uh, have done this. Um, and uh, uh, so you know, so the key the key thing is, like I said, so you know, is the fact that. Uh, back, I mean, sorry, that automatic differentiation in, 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 in per se is a transformation is a functor. Okay, should be seen as a kind of functor. Okay, so this is Conor uh, Elliott's, uh, you know, insight that we took. And then, uh, then there's this paper uh, by Wang et al. You know, these uh, people. I think they're all from uh, Purdue uh, University. So they um, they are the first who applied. Uh, you know, who were able to do back propagation on a fully general higher order language. You know, with uh, you know recursion, uh, conditionals, everything. Okay, this is like you know. A, a, a completely general uh, uh, programming language. And in fact, uh, this is something that you have to know. Okay, it, it's kind of funny because at the, um, back in the 70s, people already were doing these things on Turing complete languages. Okay, they were straight line programs, but they did have loops, conditionals. I mean, they had everything you know, the, with which we can compute anything computable. Okay, now these days, it's kind of funny because the majority of these papers here actually. Uh, they they focus on on languages which are okay very sophisticated in terms you know of a higher order you know what you can do you know of the, the structure that they have you know they're not just these you know crappy straight line programs but they're much more sophisticated but they are less expressive they're not Turing complete okay the, there's only a handful I think there's only like three papers here in this list that actually cover you know a fully general Turing complete language is this one by Wang et al that I already mentioned. Is this one by uh, Abadi and Plotkin? Well, they, but they're still first order, so they don't do high order. And then there's this one by uh, me and, and uh, Michele. Okay, so it's, it's very, the, the, these other papers, they all restrict, you know, to a non-Turing complete language, you know, but, but much more sophisticated than straight line programs. Uh, and each one of these papers, basically, you know, what they do is that they, um, they introduce their own transformation. You know, they, they try to give a better transformation, or maybe they do. The, they give the same transformation, but they give a better proof. You know that it works. Okay, so you know it's it's you know they, they give their view. Okay, of 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 this uh, you know this program transformation that is backpropagation on fully general languages, or at least on higher order. Okay, and so you know it's really very nice now that we have all these different perspectives. Okay, it's very very nice. Uh, now, so what? L let me start by. Uh, uh, I don't even have the time here, so I don't know. I don't know what I'm. Sorry, I'm just gonna have to go. Uh, okay. Um, so um, let's first start to try and understand what we're trying to do. Okay, uh, and let's look at. Uh, so I said, you know, differential programming uh, already exists, right? I mean, people are already doing it, but the, but they're not using, you know, any of this uh, of these things that are being done now because I mean, these are just research papers, okay, that appear like in the past two or three years. Um, but these things actually exist, okay, in, uh, you know, they're implemented and everything, I mean, that TensorFlow, PyTorch, and how they work is, is that they, um, so, you know, like I told you, since the 70s already, we know how to do backpropagation on straight line programs. So their idea, okay, it's not exactly what they do, but, you know, their idea is that they're going to extract um, a straight line program from an arbitrary program. Okay, so that's basically what they do, okay? And, and in order to do this, you have to execute the program, okay? You execute the program, so basically you normalize it, okay? And this and this program is going to be a straight line, okay? Because it's only 
on uh, atomic types. You see here, you see it's only a ground type. So there's, there's, there cannot be higher order things, for example, here. If this is, if this is normal, okay, if, if you have uh, reduced it to, to a, uh, to a normal form, okay. And then you can apply black, black property, you know, that you've known since the 70s, okay. Of course, you know, a PL theorist sees this and says, oh my gosh, this is, well, what is this? I mean, this is just, uh, uh, I mean, it's, it's, uh, it's not compositional, okay, it's just, uh, it, it's, it's a mess, okay. We have to, if you really have a program transformation, you should be able to apply directly to the source program, okay. And so this is what people have been doing, okay, that, that is what I, I, tell, I told you about. I mean, the fact that the, they've been, so trying to follow a different route. So here I, I left the original route, okay, but now, People uh, so have been giving a, a different route, okay? So then now you apply your transformation to the whole program without uh, executing it, so everything is completely static, okay? And then, you know, you get something that, you know, if you execute it, okay, the diagram doesn't really commute because you see the types are different. I mean, it's not gonna be exactly the same, but I mean, but it gives you, you know, the gradient, okay, with the same efficiency, you know, so it's, so, you know, it, it, it works in the same way, okay? I mean, I mean, in the sense, you know, it's, it's as efficient, you know, it's as, uh, it gets to the same, <laughs> um, to the same uh, objective, and and then of course I mean since we are a PL theorists, what do we do? Well, okay, we prove correctness. Of course, you know that's the, the one thing that we really know how to do very well. It's we take you know this transformation and we prove that it does what we want it to do. Okay, uh, and then of course we prove that it's as efficient as you know as the usual of the usual route. Then we can investigate the international semantics of this, and you maybe you know these international semantics are useful for proving correctness. And then then of course we can start implementing. Okay, some papers okay also do that. Even though I don't think that anything there is any implementation that has uh, reached you know the level of success of you know the uh, differential uh, uh, the differential programming platforms you know that exist uh, you know there the industrial ones okay but anyway. and uh, um, so there's a few uh, uh, caveat maybe on this that you should know so the, first of all uh, about efficiency okay efficiency is is very subtle okay it does not come immediately from correctness I mean it's not be just because you have defined uh, a transformation here yeah, higher transformation that seems to do what back propagation does you know um that you are efficient okay it's it's really very important i mean it's it's subtle okay you really have to, to prove it okay it's not uh, clear at all and uh, um also another thing is that as soon as your your language has the ability to do conditionals on real numbers i mean meaning a condition in which the 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 property that you're testing okay it's it's uh, looks at the value of of a real number then uh, correctness is is is, uh, is lost okay you're gonna uh, automatic differentiation is gonna do uh, it's gonna make mistakes okay and this is known also since the 70s okay it's it's very well known um, so you know you have to know this okay and and so the majority of these papers like I was saying here okay they all prove a d correct and it is completely correct because they are not using okay. Uh, if then else on real numbers, okay? As soon as you introduce it, you're gonna have mistakes, okay? Anyway, uh, so uh, now just a couple of, of slides about, you know, what we have learned, you know, from all this, uh, uh, from all these uh, uh, these different presentations, okay? I think there's there, there's a common pattern, okay? So I'm just gonna tell it to you, you know? So there's three basic principles, okay? Um, so the first two, I'm just gonna uh, gather them together in one slide, okay? This is this is what uh, both, you know, Perlmutter and Siskind and uh, Connell Elliott also, okay, already understood, okay, is that um, uh, backpropagation, okay, and AD in general is about functoriality and backpropagation has higher order, okay? So uh, the idea is that, you know, you want to compute the gradient of a uh, just, you know, first order function, okay, function of the real numbers, okay? So this is what you're interested in, okay? The gradient, of course, is just a vector of the, okay, the partial derivatives. Um, but this thing is not functorial, okay? And since you are a pure theorist and you want compositional things, okay, this is really crappy, okay? You cannot deal with things that are not compositional, okay? So what you do is that you actually study something that is not the gradient, okay? So you just throw the gradient in the garbage. You say, this is not what I want. I'm gonna do, I mean, yeah, this is what I want, but this is not what I'm gonna look at. I'm going to look at uh, this other transformation or something like I don't know, something you know this form, which is functorial, okay, and from which I can you know very efficiently, very easily extract the gradient, okay. Here you know from this expression here by just applying it to one and then substituting these x stars for injections, you you get you get the gradient, okay. It's very easy, and uh, um, and then so this is the first thing, okay. You don't you do not study the gradient, you study a functorial transformation that can express that contains the gradient. Second principle, okay, the, uh, in the case of backpropagation, this functorial transformation already contains a higher order, even if you're applying only to first order, okay? You see there is this lambda here that appears, okay? Then uh, third principle, okay, 
is something that uh, um, that's really uh, very very interesting. Okay, it's that uh, um, I mean once you've done this for uh, for your uh, first first order primitives, and once you know okay what well, uh, what well, your language is on your first order primitives, then the transformation is I mean you already have automatically a transformation that works on your whole language. Okay, so the, look at this thing. Okay, imagine that this here. Is the um, is the, uh, the 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 source language okay on which you want to define back prop okay it's it's a very sophisticated language okay which contains some primitives okay on on on, on real functions oh, sorry on, on real numbers okay and these are the things you know that are gonna uh, with which you're gonna be able to express you know the functions that then you want to compute the gradient on uh, okay so this is you want the, the transformation to have this as source okay and uh, um, okay these are the primitive functions okay. Um, but what you uh, what you know is only how to define backpropagation on the function symbols. Okay, you know, you know, this is something that people have known from the seventies, like I said. Okay, well, in fact, if things are set up properly, okay, and this is where you know it's really very very uh, hand wavy here. Okay, uh, okay, look at, at your program language. You know, as, as a two category. Okay, and you have uh, you know you have types or objects. You know, programs are uh, morphisms as usual. But then you also have you know uh, evaluation. I mean, the, you know, the operational semantics. You can see them as two arrows, okay? These computation paths, okay? And uh, so this form, imagine that it forms a, a two category with some structure that you're just going to call a two thing, I don't know, a two something, okay? And now, usually, what happens is that this thing here is the free two thing, okay? So, uh, so it's it's done, you know. Once you have defined by propagation on the, you know, on the primitives, you have it everywhere. Okay? And in fact, if you take almost every single one of those of the papers, okay, that I've listed there. The the uh, the backpropagation transformation on the language, you know, uh, no matter how sophisticated it is, it just goes through all the constructs of the language, and it does something non-trivial uh, only on the primitives, okay? Because it's a free two-functor, okay, on on something you know, on on this function, basically on this map, okay. So this is something else, you know, that, that we have understood, okay. So okay, so now you know, okay, these three principles, you know, you know them, and now you can try and build your own <laughs> uh, backpropagation transformation. So I guess this was it for the. Uh, let me see how I'm doing time. How, how long do I have left? Um, uh, well, we, we, the slot is the, another fifteen minutes. Fifteen. Minutes. But uh, do. But do yeah, I'm going to try and conclude before that, of course. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. So uh, uh, um, great. So now let me let me tell you. So you know, where, where do we go from here? Okay. So this is all nice, uh, wonderful. Okay, we have. Oops. I have uh, so now we you know we know we have all these different transformations. We know that they are correct, provably correct. Uh, blah blah blah. Okay, perfect. The relational semantics, maybe wonderful. Now um, the thing is that uh, these are all transformations, right? So they take source code and they give you source code. Okay. Um, in the spirit of an actual you know of, of actual differentiable programming. Okay. So what I call you know true differentiable programming, you should be able to. To do all this internally in your programming language, I mean, just like you know, when you have a probabilistic programming, lang programming language, you can, you know, I don't know, uh, you know, compute uh, things directly. I mean, you can manipulate, you know, your uh, probability distributions, you know, directly inside the program. Okay, so you should be able to have in your, uh, I mean, by by you know, look at this, you know, to see what I mean. Okay, you should have your language. I don't know, just a lambda calculus. Okay, and then you know, as 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 a syntactic construct in your language, you should have something that says, you know, do uh, back propagation on this term. Okay, you know, and then you know, and then the, of course the the typing rule is this thing you know that's like you know this functorial uh, typing. Okay, but then you have to define you know the operational semantics of the language so that you know this thing is executed as you know you do backpropagation on this. Okay, so it doesn't transform the the program; it just you know runs it as if it were transformed. Okay, and uh, um, and this is something something non-trivial. Okay, so the the, the naive idea is. Uh, um, is of course to turn. You take the definition, okay? You know, you have this, the, uh, you know, the, the the program transformation, okay? Typically, uh, this thing here, okay? You know that, you know, this this is this defines the transformation on on uh, on the function function primitives, okay? Uh, and then you know on all the other constructs, okay? It just goes through. So for example, I don't know d of lambda x t is going to be equal to lambda x uh, d of t, okay? Etc. Cetera, Etc. Cetera. So you know, you take the definition and you just turn it into uh, into rewriting rules. I mean, into the operational semantics. And you say, okay, so you know, d of lambda x of t rewrites into lambda x of d of t. Okay, you know, you just, you, you just, each one of them becomes a rule. Okay. Um, the problem here is that the target language usually is not the same as the source language. Okay. In the target, usually you have introduced things that are not present in the source, and so you don't know how d behaves on them. 
Okay. Typically, imagine if you do D of D of T. Okay. How does D okay behave on on itself? Okay. Uh, it's not completely clear. Okay. Um, and also, there's another thing that that shows you that this is kind of there's something that's kind of. Uh, uh, messy there, you know, when you start doing it for for real, you know, so on a real programming language that is like, you know, completely general and in particular has if then else also on real numbers, okay? You can you can write, you know, the, yeah, the rectified linear unit factor, if x less than or equal to zero, then zero else x, okay? You know, a language that allows you to write that, okay? Now, uh, in these languages, okay, we know that by the fact that AD makes mistakes, uh, we know that the standard semantics uh, it just you know breaks. Okay, you know you can't you can't use you you have to find another semantics for your, for your language. Uh, typically, okay, there is this example here. Okay, so you have that this program here. Okay, computes the identity. Okay, and yet when you do um, automatic differentiation on it, you don't get the uh, the function that's you know that's one. So I mean you expect that when you do uh, the, the derivative, you get the constant one function. Okay, which is the one you get here. Okay. But here you don't. You get you get a function that in zero is equal to zero. Okay, so it's 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 correct everywhere. Okay, except in zero. Okay, because the rectified linear unit is defined with an if then else on on zero. Basically, you know, there's, there's a problem there. And uh, so you know, so it's yeah. I don't know. There's something. Uh, so you know, a, a goal I think that you know we could uh, focus on is to uh, you know think about this. You know, think about uh, what does it mean. You know, to actually. Uh, you know, do uh, these all these um, transformation internally inside a programming language? Okay, there's there's at least you know semantically there's something that has to be. Uh, um, Plotkin and uh, Abadi and Plotkin have a semantics that works with this, but it's only first order. Okay, they, they, it doesn't work for uh, for the it doesn't have a, it's not a CCC it doesn't have a function space. Okay. Uh, something, uh, so now let's move on to, so that was kind of th theoretic if you want, you know, but I mean, but of course I think it's also, you know, uh, in terms, I mean, in terms of implementation, this is important you know, to have a language, you know, that actually has this, I think it's very, uh, very, would be very nice. Uh, now let's look at a couple of, of things, of issues that are purely, you know, uh, practical. Okay. So, um, and this is, this is really from the, my perspective and Michele's, okay. Uh, it's, uh, in fact, I, I hope that maybe other people are able to, to do better than us. Okay. But. So anyway, so Miguel and I, after doing all this, you know, we were like, oh, oh wonderful. You know, we have this uh, program transformation that is purely functional. Okay. It's really like, you know, you take a lambda term and it gives you a lambda term with just, you know, linear, uh, you know, linear types inside. Okay. But it's just a lambda term. Okay. And so, you know, we would like to uh, actually implement this, you know, make it work, you know. And our first thing was super ambitious. You know, we're like, okay, let's just do it directly in Python. You know, that's like, you know, the language now everybody uses in, in differentiable, uh, I mean, in machine learning, you know, everybody's, you know, it's all the rage, Python, Python. So let's do it directly. You know, so, you know, we were going to, you know, start, uh, you know, trying to make things, you know, work, uh, you know, as fast as we can, you know, in the, and uh, the thing is that it's, it's it completely failed for the moment, because basically we cannot do what we do in our uh, in our paper. Okay, it's just uh, we run into um, a whole bunch of problems. You know the fact that you know when we want to be efficient, we have to use you know the libraries. Okay, that come uh, with uh, with Python. Okay, uh, so typically you know, NumPy, uh, and then you know we want to do things you know very so that the for example the arrays are contiguous in memory. So we try to to use Python you know uh, to, to actually you know have full control on what you know. On how the matrices are in memory and all that, and you end up with something that is just completely different from what we have done. You know, in uh, basically what we get uh, is something that reminds uh, uh, what uh, Wang et al. You know, the, the, the Purdue people uh, did. You know, with their Lantern framework, which I think it's really it's an implementation in a, in a, of backpropagation in a functional language with references. Okay, where you have memory references, and then you know it's not pure anymore. And okay, you know, yes, I mean it's it's, it's fine. I mean I'm not saying you know it's, it's still you know nice, but it's not what we wanted. You know, we wanted really you know our, our lambda terms. You know, to be. <laughs> So we said, okay, let's try. No, no, we didn't try this, but you know, um, you know, we did this talk experiment. Okay, well, okay, let, let's let's forget about the speed. You know, let's just okay. We we want to maybe we don't do like a, a machine learning with uh, ten million parameters. We do it just with like I don't know a couple hundred. And uh, but you know, we do it in uh, some functional language. Okay, and the problem is there's also problems there. I mean, there's uh, because in our framework, okay, and this is maybe where other people will not have problems. Um, are purely, you see, purely a functional uh, backpropagation uses linearity, okay, in in a, in a very uh, uh, very crucial way, okay. You have to know that a certain function here, that this backpropagator, okay, is linear, okay. Remember the the types that in the only uh, uh, slide that I gave you that had uh, some sort of uh, technical things in it. Oh, what am I doing here? Okay. Um, so there is, you have to know that this is linear in order to apply this uh, this factor rule, okay. 
And uh, and the thing is that you know how do you apply this? You know, I mean, of course, usually uh, programming languages don't have linearity. Okay, so you have to you know make it work somehow. And I don't know. I mean, of course, we haven't tried it in practice. But the only thing solution that we can come up with, you know, in theory, all you know, in the end, end up um, being impure in some way. You know, just using some kind of you know like something, some table in memory. You know, where you store these uh, x stars. You know, somehow. So you know, so we have problems there, okay. And it would be very nice, you know, to have to be able to actually, you know, put in, in practice what, what we've done so far, okay. And and then one last, this is my last slide. I hope that there's going to be a time for questions. Um, so uh, this is something that really bugs me and Michele too. You know, it's something. Uh, um, it's like okay, you know, we're doing all this, like you know, we're busting our butts, you know, to do all this with you know with these these higher order transformations, you know, with this, uh, you know, super cool things, you know, like uh, you know, latest uh, things from PL uh, theory, etc. Ah, okay, you know. and uh, uh, but then in the end, is, is this really useful? I mean, is there an example, okay, where uh, in particular, I'm thinking, for example, of a neural network architecture where this root here, okay, the higher order root, okay, that, that you know that does the transformation directly okay on the on the program uh, is you know faster or more convenient you know it's just you know it's an advantage with respect to uh, you know the, the 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 first order root that you do when you do uh, python or or tensorflow etc okay and for the moment I, I don't have i mean we have kind you know a few ideas there but we, it's not clear it's not clear and this is really really uh, frustrating so i'm going to stop here i don't know what time it is i hope i have left some time for questions um, you, you sure have. We've got about seven minutes for, for questions. Ah, okay, great. Well, that was my plan. I mean, to leave some time because I mean, uh, perfect. I hope um, that people have something to say about this. I mean, especially you know, about the implementation issues. I don't know. The, uh, I don't. Know. <laughs> Again, this talk was more to that. just you know, like put out you know these questions and stuff than uh, telling you about work that we've done because I really don't care about that anymore. I mean, we've done so many talks about that. I just I don't. <laughs> You know, it's it's. Uh, I think it's important at some point you to just you know start discussing you know, what we should do. You know, what what are the things you know that uh, that the community you know should do. Sure, I think this is a great question. Um, Hanelli, who is the student volunteer, um, she's saying thanks for this talk. I finally understand the basic idea of functoriality. Oh, there it is, um, and higher order um, um, order yeah, with your do. slides. That was great. The talk is a real gem. So um, you you've well, generated a lot of pleasure and insight there. Ah, okay, yeah, now I see too. Okay, yeah, well, uh, you're welcome. I <laughs> so, um, I think this is a great question, Damia. I'm not sure I personally have an answer. Are there examples where the higher order root is substantially better than the first order root? I wonder. I mean, we've got about 40 people in the talk. Does anyone have any uh, response to that? Or do you have any other questions? <laughs> Don't be shy. And you, yes, you can raise your hand. Oh, someone is. Oh, no, they're not. That was. Uh, and speaker chat. That was speaker chat. Oh. Uh, I mean, otherwise, I don't know. I can try and give you my. Uh, Damien, the, there's a question. Ah, there's a question. Ah, yes, great. Gabriel, do you want to? Um, if you raise your hand, I think I can call you to the uh, to the stage to actually have a conversation. Ah, uh, yes. I mean, I can read the question to people. I mean, I guess everybody can read it, but I can answer the question already. But of course, if he uh, he wants to, please, uh, please go on. Please. Oh, I, I can start answering. Okay. Yeah. Yes. I mean, uh, no. Okay. Yeah, of course, I, I said it in a way. I, I was very, very quick on it. So I mean, I said it in a way that sounded kind of catastrophic, but. In fact, you know the the mistakes, the, these errors, okay, that AD introduces are extremely limited, okay. And uh, the, um, the 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 paper, you know, that we have last year, a uh, bubble with uh, with Michele. In fact, we, we deal precisely with this issue, okay. And uh, uh, so we, we are able to uh, understand, to give uh, a quite precise understanding, okay, what these uh, these errors are, okay. And they are extremely limited, okay. Now the the, the technical sense is kind of now I I, don't, I can't say it just like that, you know, but uh, it's um, I don't know. For example, yeah, maybe I can say it. You know, in in the um, in the case of you know, imagine you have a, a higher order language, okay, with just you know some uh, products, you know, and then you know, and everything else, if then else, etc. So you know, you have, uh, I mean, of course, constants for all real numbers, okay. So you can compute all polynomials, okay. 
then uh, the errors that you will do, okay, will uh, will always be uh, contained in uh, um, unions of uh, uh, sets of solutions of polynomials. Okay, so they're they're really very very um, very confined, you know, within a, a very uh, specific, you know, uh, uh, shape and stuff. And uh, of course, I mean. It would be interesting to try and understand uh, better this, but it doesn't mean you know that uh, that AD cannot work. Of course, yeah, probably correct. Uh, it cannot be. I mean, of course, no. I mean, it always makes mistakes. Okay, but yes, but I mean, but th th these are very few. Okay, and you know, and for the rest, it's, it's probably correct. I mean, that's what we do. You know, in that paper, we prove that everywhere else where the mistakes do not appear, it, it's correct. Gabriel, do you want to respond? Uh, sure. So if I, I understand what you're saying, uh, you you mean to say that you you've been able to demonstrate that these errors won't will, will like are are unlikely are are limited to like certain areas where they are unlikely to like actually cause problems, but it will remain true that like there's not going to be an Auto differentiation language that has relu that can be proven correct is what you're saying. Yes, I mean at least as far as the as far as the uh, the transformation is the one that everybody uses, which basically has to be like that for efficiency reasons. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, it has to commute with all the constructors. That's the problem. Okay, the transformation commutes with everything in order to be efficient. Okay, and it only does something non-trivial on the on the primitives. And in particular, it commutes with if then else. Okay, and so you know it differentiates the two branches mm. separately, and and that's where the mess happens. You know? And uh, and there's nothing to do about it. I mean, again, people in the seventies already knew this. Okay, it's not new. But I mean, again, it doesn't prevent people from from doing this sort of you know, from, from doing deep learning and. Uh... Uh, thank you. Mm -hmm. Oh, and uh, there's a comment from Alex in the chat uh, to Gabriel that they might be interested in a paper there on archive, which solves the problem by changing the meaning of correctness. Uh, okay, I don't know this one. Uh, and I think we've got a question uh, unanswered. Ohad, uh, do you want to raise your hand? Can you see the question? There's uh, a question there. One compositional yeah, yeah. level abstraction benefit system have more room for optimizations. Programs are decoupled from low-level implementation details, and the program tells the system what it needs. You see promise in general. Uh, yes, yes, maybe, yes. In fact, yes, maybe that's one That's one thing. I mean, the the, the benefit is not so much maybe in the speed, I don't know, in the, it, it's more in the way the the the, um, the differentiable programming platform is being developed. You know, it's uh, so you can, um, uh, yeah, you can optimize more, like you say, you know, uh, because uh yeah because there's this decoupling um yes maybe yes but yeah we would like we, i mean it's it's good maybe it's a good uh, yeah it's a good direction maybe where we can find uh an example you know something that uh, also i think one of the problems with this is that since we do not have uh implementations you know that can rival you know those uh industrial ones uh it's also difficult you know because uh, I mean, you know, you can't really, you can't really, you know, say, okay, you know, this is going to be faster because um, uh, maybe your 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 thing is slower just for other reasons, you know, because it's not uh, it's not just sufficiently well developed, you know, sufficiently well optimized. Uh, more generally, there is another, there are several other notions of differentiation which interact nicely with if then else. This, ah, okay, no, this was still in the uh, in the uh, in the framework of the previous question. Yes, yes. Well, there's in terms of, uh, for example, one thing that you know that we've thought about is the fact you know recurrent neural networks you know have these uh, this idea you know that you have uh, uh, you know a, a, a little layer that's you know applied you know uh, lots of times you know and uh, and uh, you know you can basically think that uh, uh, you know when you execute you know you have you know maybe this thing is is going to be uh, unfolded you know like a million times okay and uh, while you know you can compute the the transformation directly only on that small uh, part, okay, only once. But still, then I mean, you have to execute it anyway. So I mean, I, I don't know. I mean, it's it's really not clear. It's uh, oh, another question. Are the challenges you raised for internal AD primarily theoretical, but also challenges for inflation? 
There's something that challenges uh, perturbation confusion. Ah, yes. No, yes, I think, I think, yeah, perturbation confusion, yeah, it's something too. Yes, of course, I think I haven't mentioned it, but I think people know how to deal with that. Uh, so, I mean, there's got to be, you know, there is sufficient understanding, I think, so far. Uh, no, no, I think it's primarily theoretic for the moment, uh, at least as far as I see it. It's really, you know, like do what we've done so far, you know, just the typical bubble paper, okay, you know, that doesn't have to be like, you know, <laughs> it doesn't have to, you know, fully implement everything so that it's like, it rivals with uh, our friends at uh, Google. Uh, but um, the next talk, I think that I'm going to chair, it's going to be by somebody at Google, right? So I'm going to be very interested in what they have to say. Um, so, you know, it, you know, you're not interested about this, then, you know, you, you know, it's, but still, you know, do something internal. So, you know, I'm thinking theoretically at that level, but I, I don't see a challenge for the moment. All right, Damiano, I'm going to have to break in there and sure. uh, you know bring this to to a close. I mean, there's one or two questions maybe that you can take offline, maybe with Fritz. Um, everyone, let's give a big Thanks. round of applause for Damiano. 